I really disliked my literature teachers, especially back in high school. Not that I hated what they did or their classes specifically. What I hated about them was writing papers, especially research papers, because they wanted a rough draft. They wanted a first draft, then they wanted a second draft. Sometimes they wanted a third draft. They wanted you to just keep bringing drafts to them. And back then I was like, no, I'm gonna be perfect when I'm done with this because I'm gonna correct as I go. I'm gonna reread it. If something doesn't work, I'm gonna fix it there. I don't need to do a full draft because I just don't work that way. Well, I was definitely wrong because while I still do that at times where as I'm writing something, writing a script or whatever, I will change it. I will correct it. At least what I think is correcting it as I go along, if something just doesn't feel right. But then I'll read it again, or most of the time I'll have somebody else read it and they can add to it. They'll give me suggestions. And nine times out of 10, they improve it. They make it better than what I was trying to do or than I expected. So things being deleted or rewritten, that's common. And it's even common in Hollywood, whether it's TV shows or movies, there's always scenes that either get written out of the original script, scenes that just don't get filmed, scenes that get filmed but never actually make it to the final draft or make it to the audience seeing it. And this can be for any number of reasons, whether it's maybe as it's writing, it's just like, eh, this doesn't really work. Oh, wait, we don't want to go this way. We want to go this way now. So that scene doesn't work at all. Maybe after it's filmed, it's like, you know, that just doesn't work anywhere. Or eh, it's too much explanatory stuff. We need to cut that back. We need to get the story moved along. Maybe it's just like, oh, we have something like that over here. So we don't need it here whatever the case they do it all the time and that's one of the things i love about dvds blu-rays and 4ks i love being able to see the deleted scenes to see what could have been because sometimes the scenes are like oh well why didn't you keep that in that was great other times it's like oh yeah i see why you deleted that though it doesn't make much sense even if it's only five seconds but it's always great to watch what could have been i think and i love director's cuts or extended editions because then you get to see everything together sure it's longer but i like seeing how the full movie could have looked and it's not just live action that has deleted scenes it's animated films as well and since it is the year of the spider and the street rat i thought why not take a look at aladdin both that original film and the live action and look at some things that were deleted and rank them now you might be asking unless you read the title of this video which i'm assuming you did what do you mean ranking deleted scenes that seems strange or hard or weird no i'm going to rank the deleted songs from these movies which are available on the dvds well I think on the Blu-rays and the 4Ks, you can find them online. They're out there for everyone to see. And some of these songs are actually really good. Some of them make sense as to why they got rid of them. Some of them are like, well, you could have made it work because they did later on. And the biggest thing here is there's a lot of deleted Jafar songs. I'll say that right now. Which, if I'm being honest, a lot of them are a lot better than the one they actually went with. Because that's not a great villain song even though Jafar is a great villain. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy another video inspired and celebrating the year of the Spider and the Street Rat as we rank the Aladdin deleted songs. One jump ahead of the bread line, one swing ahead of the sword. I steal only what I can't afford. That's everything. One jump ahead of the law, man. That's all, and that's no joke. These guys don't appreciate I'm pro. Riff raff, straight rat, scoundrel, take back. Just a little snack, guys. <laughs> Oh.
Coming in at number six, we have My Finest Hour, which is the first of our deleted Jafar songs. And this one just does not feel like a song. Yes, there's a little bit of acapella, but I guess that's not really acapella. There's basically some speak singing in it. I'm sorry, it's been a while since I've done any real lessons or since I've sung professionally or even just at all where they've used these terms. So I am definitely rusty. So I apologize to anybody who knows what these terms are. But like I said, it just doesn't feel like a song. There's no real diversity to it. The rhythm is melatonin. It doesn't go up. It doesn't go down. The tone, again, very mellow. It doesn't move at all. It doesn't make you want to get up of, out of your seat. It's not expressing. It doesn't help move the character along at all. There's no fluctuation in how the character feels throughout this song, which is where the tone helps with that. And it's just very, very limited in what it does. Does it serve its purpose? I guess it does. Because ultimately, the version that we got in the movie, which they call Prince Ali Reprise, is a watered down version of this song. They took this like three minute song and condensed it down to maybe a minute, which actually worked. Because this was an explanation song, an explanatory song. Now those types of songs are not always bad. Sometimes they work really well and they make people enjoy them. And they'd be a lot better than if somebody's just sitting there like going, well, my father, you know, so-and-so of so-and-so or his mother-in-law, his so Sometimes singing stuff like that, though I don't think singing would even make that fun, but sometimes singing just makes that stuff more enjoyable. Here, it does not do that. There's, it feels like there's really not a song here. It feels like it's more just them happen, happening to have music in the background or having some minimal rhythm with, oh, there's a singing part here, a little singing here, a little singing here, followed by speaking parts here and here. There is nothing memorable about this song. It's boring. It's It just does not work. There's no motion. There's no real purpose behind it. Yes, it does serve a purpose in getting Jafar to become the royal big bad, you know, start that third act with Jafar taking over. But you don't get there with it. And it just doesn't work. Like I said, what we ended up getting is a watered down version of this song in the sense that it took out a lot of the in-betweens and even some stuff that started it which I think actually worked out a lot better. So, coming in at number six was My Finest Hour. Coming in at number five is High Adventure. Now this is definitely a major step up from My Finest Hour, just in the music alone. It is upbeat, it is exciting, it's clearly an adventure piece with just the music boom, 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 pronouncement. It's a song about pronouncement, about we are going to do this. We need to do this. We're going to be the best. Let's go rescue the princess. Let's go do this. But the thing is, the song doesn't make sense. And here's the reason why. The major reason is that it involves Aladdin's friends who are completely removed from the final film. So that right there, it doesn't make sense. But there's just moments in it from the very beginning that's like, wait, who's singing? What's going on? What exactly is going on? Is there a second genie? Was there supposed to be a second genie? In the original line of story, there is. And I think they probably originally had one. But it's just so confusing. But like I said, it is upbeat. There's actual lyrics, which to me makes it an actual song. The one high praise I will give this song is they brought it back in the Broadway show because they changed the story somewhat for that 
version. And it was great. They did it excellent. It was Aladdin's three friends talking about, we got to go rescue Aladdin. They brought in some of the same lyrics, but they made it all work. And it was great. It made sense. This song, I really used to like it. But then when I really started to analyze it, I realized, oh, there's actually a lot about this song that doesn't make sense. But this song, like I said, it does have a great beat to it. It has a great tone. It's uplifting. It's fun. It's clearly an adventure number. And it's so much more memorable than My Finest Hour. <laughs> if My Finest Hour is here, off camera, oh, High Adventure is all the way up here. It's drastically better just in the music alone. Even if you take out the lyrics, ignore that the lyrics don't necessarily make sense. It's just so much well better how it's put together. You can actually understand most of the time what they're saying. It feels like a song. It makes sense. It feels like it could have been in the movie if it had gone that way. But there's still just enough about it that is holding it back. So that's why High Adventure comes in at number five. Coming in at number four, we have a song that really steps everything up. It's joyous, it's fun, but it's a villain song. That's right, it's another Dilia Jafar song. And honestly, thinking about it now, I feel like this was the opposite end of Friend Like Me, where Friend Like Me was upbeat, it was fun, it was joyous, it was a hero song though. Here, clearly it's about joy and just so much fun of terrorizing people and the joy of being a villain. And what is that song? Well, it's called Humiliate the Boy. Like I said, this is just one of pure joy and it's a pure joy at another's expense, which let's be honest, as human beings, we do tend to laugh at other people's expense more often than not. I mean, all you gotta do is look at American home videos. I know it might not be a great example, but hey, one person's misfortune is another person's money and another person's enjoyment. This really does have a Return of Jafar feel to it, where Return of Jafar has Jafar's song about your only second rate which I think definitely is the better of the villain songs for him. And that one's just a lot of fun and mocking the heroes, mocking Genie, mocking Abu. This one's doing the same thing, but it's in that original movie. And while it's not at first directly mocking them in person, it's still mocking them from the very beginning. Though that could also be a downside to it because it's all about humiliating the boy it's all about humiliating aladdin and yes it does work its way eventually to where the movie would be where jafar has become sultan and then becomes the royal uh vizier the sorcerer supreme whatever yeah i know sorcerer supreme's marvel but you get my point but this song is just fun. You feel like Jafar is just having so much fun. This is his true passion. He loves what he does. He loves terrorizing people. It gives him such great joy. It's the one that we actually learn more about the genie. It's the only one that I can really think of where you actually learn what the genie did. Because he says things like, Jafar says, and the elephants, meaning what were the elephants? And Genie goes, they were rodents. So you learn more about what the Genie did to make Aladdin's wish come true. It's very fast paced. So at times it's hard to understand, which is another one of its flaws. But for me, I can overlook that, overlook that generally, as long as the rest of the song and the reason it's there is great. 
It does kind of feel off brand though, considering the rest of the film and just kind of how those songs are. But like I said, it does have a friend like me type of feel to it. And it adds layers to our villain, to our sidekick in the genie, and it just adds so much more to the story overall. And, you know, it could actually be considered kind of funny. <laughs> like I said, laughing at other people's expense. And the song is just enjoyable, especially when you're like, well, I can feel free to laugh because it's animated and it's not real. But, yeah, it's just really fun. I highly recommend listening to this one, especially if you start listening to these deleted songs. So, coming in again at number four is Humiliate the Boy. Coming in at number three is a song that I feel like I was completely unaware of, though I must have known about it considering how many times I've watched the live action version of Aladdin and watching the bonus features and stuff. Because this is a song called Desert Moon. It's the only deleted song from the live action version. And I will say this song fits right in with all the others. This has a whole new world type of feel to it except it's early on in the film because Aladdin and Jasmine they're not side by side they're not anywhere near each other but they're singing this song that they both know and according to the writers it was supposed to show that they have a connection because their mothers both sang this song to them when they were young and that is a really nice thing to add I mean yeah it's done to death at times, even if it's not necessarily a song, whether it's a book or a phrase or something, but it's just kind of nice. It's nice that we have yet another connection between these two, no matter how minute it might seem to some people. But one of the best things about this, and especially for older people who watch this movie, I'm including my dad in this because he says so many times he can't understand words, is you can completely understand the words. You know what they're saying. You know what they're singing. Even if you might not know exactly what the song is trying to say. Who knows? But the purpose of the song, like I said, might not seem clear. And that's a, what I think is one of the downfalls of it. That unless you heard what the writer said you might not really understand why this song was in there which is a good reason for it not to be in the in the movie but with knowing the background and knowing why they originally had it yeah it makes perfect sense the music itself even fits in with the part of the world that this film is set in it has that, I'm gonna say, Middle Eastern feel to it. Just the instruments that they use. And the slow, slower pace of it. There's just something about it that it just, if you're thinking about where Aladdin's supposed to take place, what countries it's supposed to be in, there's just something about this music, whether it is the instruments, the tone, the lyrics, whatever. It just feels like it fits right in with the world. And that if you went there in real life, this could be a lullaby that parents would sing to their kids. It's also a reflection song. Which, if I'm being honest, which I try to be honest on the channel all the time, this fits better for Jasmine than her actual solo song. I mean, I love her solo song. I think it's great. But people have said it feels out of place. And as I'm thinking about it, I can't help but agree to a certain degree that, yeah, it does feel out of place. And this one definitely feels much more appropriate for the movie, for the characters, whatever it just fits better overall in the screen scheme of things 
you know, in the overall view of the movie, was it really needed? No, not really. Did it add anything to the movie? And it added a nice song. Did it help the characters grow? Maybe a little bit. But it didn't really move the story forward enough. So I understand why it was cut. But it's still a great song. It's sweet. And for me to say that and to actually like it, because I'm more of a upbeat kind of guy, you know, action stories or friend like me, like that's one of my favorite Aladdin songs. Actually, it's one of my favorite songs, period. That's the type of song I'm into. But Desert Moon is a really good song. So coming in at number three is Desert Moon. Coming in at number two, we have Why Me? And this is the last of the three Dilly Jafar songs, and by far the best one. This one is just so good. It takes the best elements from every single version, including the one we ultimately got, and they bring it all here. It's fun. It's upbeat. It adds to the established story that we already know. It adds to Jafar as a character. And that's one of the great things about it. It adds to his history. We learn a little bit more about him, why he is the way he is, a little bit about him growing up. And it kind of actually creates a sympathetic villain. Not one that we love. Yeah, Jafar is definitely wrong in everything he's doing. But you start to feel sorry for him a little bit. And over the years, I've come to realize but that is truly what makes a great villain is one that is not necessarily pure evil but even if he's pure evil or she you can understand why they're doing what they're doing even if you don't don't agree or maybe there is something about them that you kind of kind of sympathize like well you did have it rough you were wrong there maybe i would do the same thing but that's what makes a great villain and this song definitely makes Jafar much more sympathetic in the long run than we get in any version of Aladdin. It follows what has already been established previously with this character and with the story. It doesn't deviate. It doesn't all of a sudden make him go from being a <clears throat> mustache trolling villain to a very grand villain with, you know, very high and I demand this and you know his speech doesn't change his attitude doesn't change it's all there the conniving villain that originally was in the beginning of the movie that we caught hints of he's there the scheming smart intellectual villain he's there but yet when he learns that Aladdin is actually Prince Ali and he starts to smile and realize what's going on in the movie we get that here too where he's like, I know what's going on now. Okay, now we're going to have some fun. Like, all of that builds to this moment. And I feel like this song would have been perfect. I would have loved to have heard this in the movie. It would have been so good. It's simply, like I said, the best of his three deleted songs. It's, and it's even better, in my opinion, than the one that we ultimately got. And here's the thing, we can connect with the song too, very simply. Why me? Think about it for a second. How many times in your life have you said, why me? <laughs> I know I've said it many times. Why me? Why am I the one that has to get stuck behind traffic? Why am I the one who has to go get food tonight? Or why do I have to be the one to watch my sibling? Or, why do I have to go visit Aunt So-and-so? Or, why am I not making more money? Whatever. Why me? That's a question we all ask as human beings. So that adds yet more relatability, not just to Jafar, but through the song, to the character, to everything that's going on. Though, this does have the same problem as the other three Jafar songs. I mean, the other two, I'm sorry, the other two Jafar songs. 
which is that there is a lot of just speaking interjected there. But the way he talks and what he says is fun and engaging. And it doesn't take you out of the song itself. It feels like it belongs there. It works. And it's, it's this idea, I think, of making a hero song, making a hero song good, but you just, you take it up a notch. You know, it's, I don't know, hero songs can be good, but they can also be, you know, kind of wishy-washy or I am going to do this, I am going to do that. You know, very, I'm the hero. I have heroic goals. But what this song does is it takes those ideas of what you might consider a hero type song to be and it turns it on its head and it makes it about the villain and the villain has his own hero song. Because like they say, many times anybody who plays a villain will say, the villains don't think they're the villains. They are the heroes of their own story. So these are very fun, interesting hero songs as far as I'm concerned. But it still only comes in at number two because there is one that I think is just can't help but be better than all of them. And if you know anything about Aladdin, you know what it's going to be. But Why Me comes in at number two. But coming in at number one, we have Proud of Your Boy. Now this is the most memorable and most singable of all the deleted songs. This is the one, I can start singing it right now, I remember it so well. Proud of your boy, I'll make you proud of your boy. Yeah, I know it's bad, wasn't really trying to be honest. But it's just so memorable, it's sweet, it's soft. And I know, that might be weird coming from me based on what I've said earlier in this video. But that's a big part of it. It's a song that sticks with you. The words are crisp and clear. And you just remember it. From the first time you hear it, there's so many parts of the song you will remember. And it's, it's also in the Broadway show, just like High Adventure. And they do it in a way that I'm like, why didn't you keep this in the movie? You could have changed it. You didn't even need to change it that much, just like they did in the musical. And it would have worked fantastically. It would have really added I think to the movie I mean in the musical they bring it in right after Aladdin starts singing his little interlude I'm gonna say or maybe it's one step reprise they call it where he's like I don't buy that if only they look closer blah 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 then he sings this song I think they could have done that in the movie but the other thing about this song is that it's inspirational. And I'll be honest with you. I don't know how many times I've sung this song to myself. Just, you know, in the song he's saying, believe me, bad as I've been, Ma, you're in for a pleasant surprise. You know, maybe I'm not singing it in that, specifically in that version or in that idea. But just the idea that, you know what? I'm gonna make you proud of me. Whether it's my parents, my wife, friends, just the idea that I don't wanna let people down. And this song is really inspirational when it comes to that. So whenever I feel down, this is sometimes one of the ones that I'll just automatically start singing. And it helps give me a boost too. And to be honest, none of the other Aladdin songs do that not even the ones that are in the movie do that so it is rather disappointing that they took this song out of the final cut like i said it's soft it's sweet but the lyrics are full of passion full of love and devotion commitment there's just so much love in this song the basic replacement, like I said, that they gave it, gave in the movie for it, it's okay. It's the one that I started singing earlier in this segment that is just really, really short. 
it's okay. But this one has more heart. This has more purpose to it. This is the one that people would have remembered so much more. And I think, maybe I'm just fooling myself, but I think it could have been nominated for an Oscar as far as song goes. Who knows? I don't know what it was like back then, but it's just that good. So coming in at number one is Proud of Your Boy. Overall, I don't really think any of these deleted songs are terrible. Some are definitely better than others, and some make sense why they got rid of them. But in general, I like all of them. Now that's probably because I really love Aladdin, and I would like probably just about anything. But who knows? If these songs had been included in the movie instead of other ones, maybe I'd feel differently about the movie. Who knows? But it's cool to at least think about what could have been or what might have been. I do love going back and looking at things that people originally thought about but never made the final cut. So going over the list one more time, coming in at sixth place, we had My Finest Hour. Coming in at fifth place was High Adventure. Coming in at fourth place was Humiliate the Boy. Coming in at third place was Desert Moon. Coming in at second place was Why Me. And coming in at first place was Proud of Your Boy. I highly recommend, if you haven't, take a moment and go and watch or listen to these songs. They're on the Aladdin Blu-rays, the 4Ks, or they're just on YouTube. Look them up. They've got the animatic versions, which is great. Jonathan Freeman, who voices Jafar, I believe he's the one that voices and sings all the Jafar songs, which is great. But what do you think? First off, what do you think of these songs? If you've listened to them, am I right? Am I wrong? Is your list different if you've listened to them? What do you think of them? Do you wish any of them had been included? If not, does this video make you want to go and listen to them? If so, go watch them, come back, and comment about them. No matter what, just have fun doing it and enjoy these adventures of what could have been with Aladdin. So, until our next year of the Spider and Street Rat video, remember, enjoy what you love, read what you love, and let's all work for a better fandom. I'll see you next time.